welcome. Today we're going to be proving the Bessel inequality and the Parseval identity. So let's get started by proving the Bessel inequality first. Here's the proposition. So we're situated in an inner product space X, and we're given EK, which is an orthonormal sequence uh, of the inner product space. An orthonormal sequence is just a sequence of vectors with norm 1 that are all orthogonal to each other. And so given only those two hypotheses, we have this, um, this inequality here, which is pretty nice because it gives us a bound on what would be the coefficients of an abstract Fourier series of a point uh, x on this vector space. All right, so we're going to divide the proof up into three parts. The first part involves defining this y and z, which are going to be useful later. This y we're going to define as a partial sum of what looks like um, the abstract Fourier series of the point x. And this abstract Fourier series that I say, uh, every x in this space can be uniquely represented as an abstract Fourier series, but it's not necessary given our assumptions that the series will converge. Anyway, that's just a digression. Um, that doesn't really matter to us now. We're just defining y as, um, as this, what looks like to be uh, a partial sum of the abstract Fourier series of x. And then we're defining z, which is just the difference between x and y. So it looks like the error term, um, the error between um, of, of our approximation given by y of the point x. All right, so we have an approximation of x, which is y, and then the error of that approximation, which is z. And now in part two, we're going to use this z and y uh, by trying to prove that they are orthogonal. So trying to prove that their inner, uh, that their inner product is zero. And to do that, it's just one straightforward calculation. We just um, just calculate the inner product pretty directly. Just put z and y. Uh, try to take the inner product of z and y. Expand z out, and the rest is, is a calculation. You may pause it if you wish to uh, go through it in more detail. But in the end, we do get our results. And the final part of our proof is using that result above, that z and y are orthogonal, to get to Pythagoras, which is this one equality up here. So Pythagoras, um, a more general version of Pythagoras for inner product spaces. Um, given the assumption that z and y are orthogonal, we have this equality. And so now, it's just one final step to get to the Bessel inequality. Uh, the Bessel inequality essentially wants a bound of, of, of the norm squared of x. So we write down the norm squared of x, and we know that it's equal to, to this. This We just rewrote x as z plus y. And now we applied, we applied Pythagoras, and we finally get our bound. So we get a greater than or equal to um, the, the, the norm squared of y because z squared is greater than or equal to 0. And we have this final step 3 here um, just by rewriting the norm squared of y as the inner product of y with itself. Uh, I'm doing one little calculation and we finally get to, to this. And this is almost Bessel. We're almost there. We just have to apply one limit, which is the intuitive thing to do if you would like to get Bessel. And um, it appears right here in front of our eyes. And so now to prove Parseval, we have to assume uh, the context is essentially the same for Bessel, except we assume two more things. The totality of the orthonormal sequence, so our sequence EK is now also total, um, and, and um, the completeness of the space X, so our X is now a Hilbert space. So we only have those two additional assumptions, and we get for all X and X equality of the Bessel inequality, which is pretty amazing. And uh, the more amazing part is the proof is even shorter than for the Bessel inequality. That is, um, it fit in one slide only because I, I omitted the, the following proposition that I mentioned before earlier, um, which was that every x in a, complete, in a complete inner product space for which we have, um, we have that total basis, uh, ek, we have that every x can be represented by, uh, by its abstract Fourier series, or its abstract Fourier series actually converges to it, so we can write uh, this as an equality here. Uh, and using this equality, uh, Parseval follows from one straightforward calculation, writing down the, uh, just calculating the value of the square of the, the norm of x, which is essentially what Parseval wants, right? Parseval is just, um, Parseval just asks, what is the, what, what does the norm squared of x equal? And so we're trying to answer that here. We write down the norm squared of x, rewrite x, uh, rewrite the norm squared of x as the inner product with, of x with itself. And we have this one additional step four here, uh, which would be a straightforward thing to do if, if our series that we were working with uh, were finite. And I wrote in the footnote here that one may justify this step with an argument involving limits. 
And the argument involving the limits is the following. Uh, you can say that the inner product is continuous. Um, so you can so you can remove the, the limits from the inside of the inner product, then work with these series as if they were a, a sum. And then in the end, I would just reapply those two limits that you removed from the inner product, and you finally get your result. And that concludes the proof.